there's no get rich quick in the system. There's no get rich quick in the system. The system, um, you know, you know, if it was get rich quick for everybody, then everybody would be doing it. You know, so um, well, we are now um five five minutes after, so I'm I'm gonna start now. Um, so welcome everyone. And basically, um, can you and um, just check in again that everybody can see my screen. Can we just type in a yes if you can see my screen, and you can hear me clearly. Yes. Okay, that's brilliant. Can can we um can we just type in um I've seen Carl. Yep. Um. Um. Jose. Yeah. Alston. Alston. Yes. Okay. Um. Okay. So. I've seen Carl. Yep. Demon. Yes. Um. What about Teresa? Can you hear me still? Um, Teresa, can you... okay, okay, brilliant, right, guys? So, um, let's go through the slides and um, explain to you how this thing works now. Um, so basically, you know, what is forex trading? Um, you know, forex trading is, um, you know, when for example you're leaving from the uk you plan to say go to say um germany you plan to go you know go to say jamaica you plan to go to america um you know you're part of the forex trading because you know you're transferring from one currency to another um so say for example you know at the, at the moment the exchange rate say um with um the you know say for example the jamaica british pound you're looking at um 161 jamaican dollars would give you one british pound um, and then next week it might be 175 Jamaican dollars give you one British pound. And if you buy it this week and you buy it and you sell it the following week, you might make make a profit. So even that way you can make money in terms of forex in terms of the forex market. But that's you know that's um, minor compared to what the big guys are doing. You know the big guys in terms of interbank. You know for example, um, China want to develop something in Jamaica and it's gonna you know or Jamaica wants to do something in another country, or America wants to develop something in another country. Um, and the big guys then will will try and get the best rate possible. And these guys will be spe spending billions of dollars. Now within the the forex market, there's over four trillion dollars traded each day. Just imagine, uh, you know, I, I don't want even, I don't even want a tiny speck of this trillion dollars. I, I just want a little tiny bit, you know, that, that's all, that's what we probably would want, right? We wouldn't want, you know, basically to be getting um, this, this, you know, and, and if you look at the bottom here, you can see how many zeros, that is um, a thousand, thousand million gives you a trillion dollar. And that's how much this market is value on a daily basis, you know? So, you know, if, if, you know, if that's an incentive or a motivation for us to be a part of this, this system, you know, I don't know what else will sort of motivate people. But that's, this is what this market is worth on a daily basis and just exchange rate between one country and another. Um, right. So in terms of the currency pairs, um, the most traded currency pair, um, the most traded currency pairs of all. Um, most traded currency pair of all is um is the you know uh, most traded currency pair in the world are called the majors. We have the minors, for example, you've got like um you know the, you've got the euro, the euro um say for example the euro GBP, but then these currency pairs that we've got here you now the euro USD, the USD Japan, GBP USD, Aussie USD, USD Swiss franc, and so on. These all of these are the different major currency pairs, right? So, um, you know, and these, these sort of prop up the market. And as you know, um, the Europe, Europe is like one of the central major players in the global economy. And, you know, you've got the US, USD, which is the big player. So if you notice, most of the currency peers that are the majors, they have links with the, UA, the USD. So this is America, 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 America. So if they're not with the American currency, then they, they won't be considered a major currency pair. Ultimately, however, Euro, Great British Pound, so this is a Great British Pound, which is GBP. Um, you've got Switzerland, you've got New Zealand, and you've got Canada, and those are the big players, okay? Now, um, how do we compare the currency pairs now, okay? 
So got this this is how the, the the brokers typically display the currency pairs. So we've got this is the base currency, and this is for example the um the code currency. This is like the counter currency. Um, we've got for example here. This is for example the price of the, um, the euro USD. And then say for example if you look at the end there, we've used four digits from the decimal point one two three four. Now guys, what you could do is you could always um send you know. Put in chat if I'm going too fast, okay? Okay. So go into chat if um if I'm going too fast and let me know. All right. Um, can I just let me just engage with people and just see? Can you just tell me if I'm going too fast? Either type in no or yes for me. Okay, brilliant. Um, okay, one person. Um, okay, right. Okay, let's you know, just. But guys, any questions you've got while I'm going through this thing, please um, just just type them in. Okay, any questions whatsoever. Um, so um, I can always answer these because I'm going to do the first 30 minutes just to you know, give you an overview of how this thing works, and then basically you can always um, then type your questions in. And if, I, for example, I don't get a chance to answer your questions today, then I will always send you an email. Um, so to give you an update and an answer. Right now, this is where we are now. We've got the ask price, right? So this is ask price. You can buy one euro for this bit, right? This is just the difference between the spread. So we've got one, two, three, four digits there, and four to six. And this is just like if we take away four to five from four to six, we get a spread of of one spread. The spread is one pip difference. Okay. Now, let's go back to the base currency, and we've got the, the code currency. The code currency is, for example, the counter currency. So this is the major one, right, and the base one. So say, for example, if I think that the euro, and based on the fact now, at the moment, the euro is doing well. You know, there's a lot of positive data coming out of Europe. Um, the gross domestic, um, gross domestic product at the moment is, you know, is, is better than expected. Um, you know, all the, the, the signals of, a, of, a, uh, of an improving economy is coming out of Europe at the moment. So therefore, the euro is, you know, actually doing very well. And I'll show you a chart later on of what the euro currency is doing over the, um, I would say, over the last 12 months. Now, if I think that the euro is going to do very well, then I'm going to buy the euro. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to buy the euro. Now, basically, if I think that, the euro is going to go down then I'm going to sell the euro against the USD because remember as I said this is the base currency if you think it's going to go up you buy this one if you think this one is going to go down you sell this one and that's the link between the two and there's and for, for the for the um, comparison we're always with, with currencies it's always two comparison comparing with each other okay Right, so everybody okay with that? Any questions there, guys, before I move on? Any questions no, with that before I move on? No, yes, no. no. Yes, no? No. No. Continue. Okay. Right, so let's move to the next one. Um, right, so therefore, there are different types of traders. You know, we've got the fundamental trader, we've got the technical trader, we've got the sentiment trader, we've got the market timer, and we've got the arbitrage trader. Now, you know, the fundamental traders are those people who basically, they, they look at the fundamentals that's coming from the different country. For example, at the moment, um, you know, we've got the crude oil, we've got crude oil situation from Canada. Um, we've got Russia in terms of oil is, you know, that, that's their babies. You know, that's where they make most of their income from. 
Um, now, America, now all they've got to do is flood the system um, with lots of oil. And then, you know, the currency of, of say, Russia will go down. It, it's what I'm saying. So, you know, the fundamental trader will, for example, if we're looking at the stock market, and, um, you know, the fundamentals came out of Barclays that, you know, they've got lots of PPI claims still to go, then the fundamental trader is going to look and say, well, you know, Barclays is likely to go down. And that's what, the, you know, so they're going to want to sell Barclays. Okay. Now we've got the technical traders and the ones who sort of look at charts, right? Look at support and demand levels and just sort of read the chart and then see how they take it from there. Where we've got the sentiment traders now, they basically seek to identify and participate in trends. They do not attempt to out, you know, outguess the market. Um, instead, they attempt to identify securities that are moving with the momentum. So they sort of engage with the market and say which stocks, which currency pair is going up and then buy at particular points. Okay. And then we've got the market timer, which they sort of do both. They sort of use a bit of the technical or they use the fundamental. And then we've got the guys now, the arbitrage traders, which these guys know um, they've got these guys have got the big money because all they're looking at is just buying one one sort of currency pair and selling another and then making their money from the difference between the spreads on say for example different platforms but for but for me i mainly go with um technical trading um and also i don't really do lower time frames than one hour charts um because you know most most of the charts that's lower than an hour basically it's mainly noise Right, guys. Now, how does the broker? You know, with when with all of this, right? We have got to um, we've got to get a broker, and I've got a broker that I currently use, and and the broker that I'll recommend if you're interested in, um, trading at the end of the session. Um, how does the broker make their money? No, they make their money between the spread. No, if you look at this, right? Um, if you look at this, this Australian dollar versus the USD, and you've got eight zero five one seven, right? You've got eight zero five four zero right the spread between these two is 23 right now because we do it of a tenth of a pip on this platform this is like 2.3 pips so you see as i enter this trade i will be down by 2.3 um, pips now pip is just the difference between this one here this you know so we've got one two three four the fourth decimal place and the fourth decimal place okay which we're looking at roughly, um, we're looking at roughly three, you know, roughly three pips overall. Okay, so that's what we're looking at there. So we're looking at this and this one. So we're looking at roughly three pips. So say for example, if we think that um, the Aussie is going to be going up, and the Aussie then move to 50, 52, 53, 54. Every time the Aussie move from here onwards, then I'm making money. If if I t think that I'm um, speculate that the Australian dollar is going to go down, then what happens is that this thing will move from 51, then to 50, then to 49, and so on, and then go in the opposite direction. So the broker makes their money by the spread between the bid and the ask price. Okay. Um. So that's so. So now let's look at now. So how do we how do we go about making money now? And and this is the way I trade anyway okay um and basically this is a chart um and this is for example a forex chart i'll show you a real chart um shortly um and say for example i've got this currency pair and these are just what we call indicators and i'm going to show you the different individual indicators now if you look at some people's chart you're going to see lots and lots and loads of confusing um stuff for me um i sort of use um just some simple stuff on my chart this is what we call a 200 day moving average this is a a 50 day moving average right this is what we call um, a stochastic indicator which shows if you look at this point here it shows when something is overbought when people have been buying buying because the swiss japanese currency pair that i'm looking at at the moment yeah this is not this is one of the minor currency pairs because i've already told you about because if you notice there's a cross pair between the swiss and japan whereas we have got um currency pairs between say the usd and Japi, that's a major. This is one of the minors, the, you know, the minors, they, they are not that significant. Like, Swiss, you know, Swiss Japi, unless you're with the USD, you're, you're a minor, yeah? So anyway, um, if we look at this point here, this is in at a certain level. If it's above 80, then it's above 
um, people have been buying, 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 saying that the Swiss franc is going to beat up the Japanese currency, right? So this is what we've got up there. And this also what I've got here, I've got what we call a, a supply and demand level. And this is what we call a supply level. And everybody wants to get rid of, you know, sell. They're selling the Swiss, um, the Swiss chapter at this point. Now, for, I'll just give you like how if I was to trade this live, right? Now, all I want to see, I want to see green there. Okay. I want to see three yellows on top, right? And then I'm entering to the trade there. I could then run and run and run with this trade until I see yellow and green. Then I get out the trade. The same, the same thing here. Going down this time, I see, I see this bit here. I see a green there. Can you see um, yellow above here? I would have got into the trade there. My stop loss would have been there. Then I would have been stopped out of this trade. So therefore, I would have been, had a loss. But then I would do the opposite trade, going in this direction. If you notice here, I've got my three yellows there. Yeah, I've got my red. And this is when I'm out of this trade. Right, so that's that's all the profit that I'll be making there, and so on. Um, we're going all the way up again at this point here. Okay. Um, we've got this bit here where we've got the great, we've got red again. This bit here, we've got one, two, three yellows. I'm entering on the third yellow, all the way down again. Okay, and and that's how I would you know sort of enter and, and exit this trade. Okay, guys, so that's how we sort of, and what we're doing, all we're doing is speculate on the direction. We're saying either this thing is going to go up or it's going to be going down. That's all we're doing, right? And, um, you know, all we've got to do while we put on a trade is to make sure that we've got our stop loss in place, right? You know, we, we can't trade without a stop loss. And, and with trading, guys, you know, it's best if you use money that you can afford to lose. But then with, with, anything, with everything in life you do, right? You know, you know, you, you've got to, you know, you've got to, you know, for example, you've got a risk tolerance. For example, what I do, I only risk one percent of my account. I'm never ever going to risk more than one percent, because I give you an example, and and this has happened to me a number of times over the years where I've been just, you know, I've, at one point I tell you I, I was I took me two weeks and I was up over twelve thousand pounds in two weeks, right? And within, you know, I, I said to my my wife that look, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna buy this. I'm, I, I bought a, you know, an iPad for my son, and and I was, you know, getting all the stuff that was before she went to get my daughter from school, and only to realize by the time she come came back 45 minutes later, um, I lost that I lost that um that that 12,000 pounds that took in 45 minutes, because I got greedy. Because sometimes with trading, um, you feel invincible. You feel like you can never lose. And, and that's that's the downfall of trading. That's the reason why I've you know in the past I, I've lost thousands and thousands of pounds because I I always get greedy and and end up putting some really big size. Now, what my in terms of what I can do for you guys basically is to make sure that my experience doesn't doesn't become yours. And and what you can then do is make sure that you learn from what I'm doing and you take this in a cautious way. And um, and for example, you know, using a demo demo account for a period of time and making sure that you understand what you know what trading is about, what strategy fits in with you. And and let me go to the other let me go to the other slide because I think I've put some stuff there. Right, so uh, how do you put trades on the on the MT4? No, I, I tend to use the MT4 platform. Um, so I'm going to come back to the MT4 platform and show you how it works on the MT4 platform and show you a number of um, trades and, and how they look on, 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 on my platform. So I'll come back to that shortly. Um, but, you know, um, for example, um, oh, oh, you know, with trading, right, um, you know, I've been on many courses. I've paid from £3,000 to £5,000 courses. And I went on a course, came back, I'm feeling really good. And... Um, trying the strategy it was working then it stopped working and then i you know feel as if basically you know i've, I've you know what you know i i wanted to win in every single trade and that's the downfall of trading um mindset because you're thinking that you know you should you know it's a holy grail you should always win and and the thing is that what people don't really understand is that when when you're running a business there are going to be times when the business is not going to turn over a profit and it's what you do at that very point that's going to make a business a success and what I would love for people who are sort of want to get involved with trading with me, they've got to see it as a business. Now, 
you know um if you look at you know for example i have tried you know um for example this trading strategy i was doing at one point was 75 percent win rate but back then because i didn't have the knowledge and understanding i i sort of thought well you know what um 75 percent and this and and this strategy that i developed was like I, i'd like um i think i think it was about 15 16 winners consecutively and i felt like you know i was invincible i was you know and i was i took my time i was almost like i was making like 50 pounds a day sort of thing 50 pounds a day and i was like whoa, whoa, whoa this is working and i just you know <laughs> i went in i just said okay you know what i don't want 50 man i want a thousand pounds or you know probably uh, even two thousand pounds and what happened i just wiped my account out the very day when i put the trade on that was the day when the strategy just didn't work but then if i was following my one percent maximum percent per account per trade um then basically i wouldn't have had that situation i would have kept my my my, my profit you know so i know understand that there's therefore there's no holy grail but ultimately if something has got a 75 percent win rate what could happen at the start you could have 75 consecutive winners and then your next what 25 trades could be losers you know but what you're hoping is that you win more than you lose and i'm going to show you i'm going to show you um shortly on the on the chart how how does that work so you know for example a lot of the times it's down to um you know money management and understanding um and understanding yourself and having a positive mindset and following rules because you know all the market indicators that we can have you know when it comes on to emotional intelligence um what we believe and our mindset you know no matter how good our trading structure is you know trading can be very challenging but very rewarding if you follow the rules and stick to it you know and just do due diligence and be patient that's what trading is about now i know um you know women tend to be better traders than men because uh, women are more patient you know and you know it doesn't matter what i you know what sort of words i say tonight you know words does not change people's experience that does and basically you know if if one is willing to take that that step and start practicing and practicing then they can get over that hurdle yeah now you know what is an indicator right oh you know those stuff that i showed you earlier on on the slide before um those are the indicators now in technical analysis which i tend to use technical analysis a bit of fundamental for when i'm when i'm trading any stock at the moment i'm in a trade with um tesco i bought tesco at 175 tesco is um, i think 189 and i did tesco um, i did that trade for um five pounds for every movement so say for example tesco is 175 um you know and i you know every and tesco moved to 176 then every move Tesco moves one point, then I'm up five pounds. Um, I could have I could have risked say ten pounds for every movement, but then that would have been like outside my one percent region. So now I'm more disciplined. So I, actually that that's a winning trade. I was also in another trade last week with um Ford. Um for the motor car. Um yeah, big company. Um their their stock price was you know hammering hemorrhaging um and i got into that when my my trading strategy tell me to get in and yet again as much i've been i've been now like winning in trading i still didn't follow the rules i i saw the money i saw the profit came in and i just went for it and what happened it went up another further if i stayed into that trade and let my you know i would have been up another further 200 pounds now basically what i didn't do there you know and this is the key in trading you've got to allow your profits to run and cut your losses and that's the key and all this thing is you know is that you know is that about about, about that experience no most indicators the only indicators that we've got here you know they're lagging indicators and we've also got leading indicators right but what we've got to do is make sure that we've got a system that we understand and a system that we're willing to follow right i'm just going to show you some um some technical indicators because we're coming towards the end now and, and i'll give people a chance to ask questions so this this one here is called the Bollinger Band, and it's like, this is like a 21, you know, a 20 day moving average. And these bands, every time this thing hit the band, there it goes back up to that section there, move back down, and so on. So it's you know just to and fro sort of thing. And you know, and this is the average. This is what we call a moving average. 
and you don't need to know about the technical ins and outs of how the moving average is calculated but you know just say for your argument say the moving average is like say this is a 20 day moving average they take 20 days add it together divide by 20 then it takes the next 20 days they forget about the one previous or the next 20 days divide so we don't need to know the technical jargons all we need to do is to look and say okay if this is the time when it hits here i'm gonna buy then that's what i'm gonna do okay um so this is the bollinger band which is two within two standard deviation and guys let me tell you some of the best traders aren't people with degrees in economics and financial management and so on you don't need all of those things we need is mental discipline and, and very good emotional intelligence and the ability to be patient you know and for example you know if you are in a one day you know i remember one of my worst trades ever um was when i left i was working at um a really um a school out there that their teacher was horrible um to me i got one of the best results in the history of that school um in maths for the department that i was running and she was horrible i left i i i, I came home shouted at me i was real upset came home and what i enjoyed doing was trading i went on started trading i lost over twelve thousand pounds because and i was up like what's five thousand pounds in that session alone and I end up just, you know, so never, ever, ever trade when, you know, when you're feeling down or upset. And, you know, if one of you, you know, one of your children decide that they're going to be rude and you shout at them and, you know, you're, you know, get up and walk away from your computer screen. You can make money, guys, but basically it's a lot to think, a lot to do with your, 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 your emotional intelligence, your psychology, money management and discipline. Okay. Now. Uh, momentum indicator this is a momentum indicator when it's you know um, it shows there's there's an indicator at the bottom there we've also got relative strength index if it goes above 70 then what we do it's meaning that it's over or right if it goes below it it's um it's it's overbought then if it goes below 30 then it's oversold and they will want to buy it back yeah what we also got is exponential moving averages um, this is just doing the average over a period of time this is a eight EMA. Um, we've also got. Hello. Can you hear, can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Right. Um, we've got the relative vigor. That's another indicator. But guys, another thing. Um, in terms of supply and demand level. So all of these supply and demand levels is where the market will go to and then come back to that level. If you notice, look, the market comes back. That's another one um we've got also different um channels and different zones and so on so supply and demand level but let me um let me go on to a chart so you can see what a trading chart looks like right so there are several um different currents appear for example we've got this sub this demand level here um what we go into this trade we put we put our stop loss so say for example we get the three yellows here one two three right and then what we do now we look below that's going to be our stop loss so we're looking at nearly 100 pips if we're used on the daily chart but then this is the potential 560 pips and only risking um, 100 and odd pips there right so that that's the sort of potential that we're looking at but then if for example you were in profit at 138 pips and you took profit and didn't allow this thing to run then the likely chance is that you know you're not going to be you know uh, an overall winner because you need to have more winners far more winners than losers and say for example if you did um say four say 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 you say you did 10 trades right you could have if you did say and it was like every one trade that you lose you win um every one trade that you say for example you're doing two to one so every time say for example if you, if, if you're in say say 100 pounds but every time you put a trade on, you're winning 200 pounds. Then you can actually lose, still lose five trades and still be break even. Make sense? Okay, guys. Now, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap up now. On, and basically what you need to do, right, is to let me know. Basically, if you're interested um, in, in, in um, taking this thing further in terms, because what I'm planning to do, I'm open to, to offer... Um, group sessions um in terms of um either group sessions or one-to-one -one in terms of tra in terms of training and to understand how to trade the stock market and the forex market or the commodity commodity market and it all depends on what you would like to do so guys can you 
if you if you if you've got any questions now, um, can you just fire them through, please. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, um so can, guys can you um can you fire your um your questions um through now to me? Um you can type your questions in. Well for me, I actually missed about a good um twenty minutes. Okay. If not more. Um due to the time I actually logged in. Okay. So um well I've recorded the session anyway. Um so I'll be able to, to send you the recordings. Oh that's good. So based on this, yeah. I take it you have so many people to actually trade under you to make an actual substantial profit to a certain degree. Well, you see, it, it's um, profit in terms of it's relative, and and what people have got to do is to make sure that they consider um, process over outcome, because the ini initial stage of, of trading shouldn't be about making big money, uh, because sorry, that's where I went wrong. All I was thinking about, you know, I want to make big money. So basically, you've got to set yourself a platform first. No, no, no. I've got, I've got um, this platform. Er, er, Anybody can have a platform like this. All I've got to do is just show you how to, to, to download the platform and the company and all that. And you can then trade your own money, everything. But I wouldn't suggest that anybody do any sort of trade in real money at this point. You know, because, you know, as you know, um, you know, if I said to you that I am I'm a doctor um, and you know, I went to this. No, so let me let me say that again. If, for example, if I said to you, I went to the um, to the shop, um, W. H. Smith, and I bought a book on how to do a minor surgery. I'm pretty certain you wouldn't want me to do a minor surgery on yourself. So therefore, you know, it would be more, um, you know, but then if I said to you, I went to uni and I studied and I did all the practice and I've had some, you know, then you'd more likely to get me to do it. So sometimes people just want to jump into this and think, you know, it's going to be get rich quick. It doesn't work like that. It's about, you know, being on that journey and, and, and putting the time in to, to practice and understand. You know, I, you know, there's also other settings where people can get, um, I could then put my trades on, show what I'm going to put on, and then you put the trade, you know, but for some people that might be, you know, they want, you know, it's almost like one of those settings where you said you can give a man a fish and, um, or you can, you can, or you can teach him how to fish. And I, yeah. and I would love that journey of showing someone or teaching someone how to fish a day for they can get all the fishes in the world that they want. I think what I was trying to come across, I know I mentioned to you earlier on, if this was a more or less like another pyramid, no, no, this scheme. is nothing. No, this is nothing to do with permit scheme. This is this is about you trading your own money. This is about you yeah. being accountable um, to yourself. Yeah, and 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 what I, the, the only thing I would say to people: don't trade money that is going to be the mortgage or your you rent, you know, or food money for for tomorrow. Trade money that you can afford to lose, um, because you know, you know, it doesn't matter what business this is that you, that you're doing. Um, you know, nothing is certain in life. You know, and and that's the ultimate. However, if you do this thing properly, you can become profitable. Right. So this has nothing to do with any permit scheme or anything. This is about you basically um, looking at a chart and then deciding, look, you know what? Um, I'm interested in doing this. This is something I like, and I would love to have a venture and have a go at it. And then you then you know get up on a demo account. I I sort of demonstrate to you how you go about doing it. When do you buy? When do you sell? Um, but but before we get to that level, I need to show you how the charts operate and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I would think I would probably need to have a one-to-one -one with you. Okay. At, at this moment in time. Um, yeah, it sounds interesting. But like I said, I came in part way through your presentation. Okay. Uh, I'll be intrigued to see if, what other questions people may have, so I'm going to stay silent. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, um, MetaTrade. Okay, someone of that. Uh, I've seen a question here. Yeah. Uh, what does MT4 stand for? It just stand for MetaTrader for platform. Um, for that, you know, I'll stand there. Um, what does MT4 stand for? Yeah, MetaTrader for platform. 
you know, this is the platform that I've got here. This is MT4 platform. Yeah, and all it does basically, I can trade on this thing. Um, you know, for example, all I've got to do here is just put my trade on, you know. What I've also got, I've got something that basically work out the percentage. I've tried to make this really simple. So there's no need for people to try and think about this or think about, um, you know, it's just about following the routine. When you see this, you buy. When you see this, you sell. That's it. But also, ultimately, I'm going to be teaching you so you can have an understanding of, you know, which chart you probably want to follow and which one you wouldn't want to. And if the chart is too crowded or if the chart, you know, smooth selling going, then, you know, and so on. So that's how I would actually do it. Yeah, let's see if we've got some any more questions coming down. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry to be um, being yeah, yeah, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry. How much would you realistically invest? Um, is there an actual benchmark or minimum that you have to trade by? Okay, right. You can open a trading account with £100. Yeah. You can right. open a trading account. You can trade as low as 10 pence per point so you something can be moving for 10 pence yeah um to 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 basically um trade now my my plan basically is to is to either to do a group session with with five people in a group or i i do one one to one right um you know and it's up to people now it, it will cost people for example 20 pounds um if they're in a group per person or you're looking at if you want say one to one session, you're looking at fifty pounds per hour for the you know within that session, um, which is very competitive. If you check out a lot of the, the other guys out there, they they're charging mega bucks. But for me, basically, I enjoy teaching. I love teaching. But ultimately, you know, I would love to see you know because initially, um, what I've also got coming on um, next week, um, next week Tuesday, I'll be meeting with someone. They basically will um. We were providing people with funding, so you know if you you know if you if for example if you if you needed money and then you pay that money over a pe period of time, it's almost like a loan they they they're providing, and they're gonna provide yeah. you money so you can pay for the courses. That's for anyone body who's interested in doing that anyway. Um, so that's that's you know um that's one opportunity that is out there. Um, let's see. Do you think Brexit um to make a dent in for it? No, no, no. Brexit. Um, I am happy with Brexit because you know when we, what we want is volatility. So Jose, you said um, do you think Brexit? No, we want volatility. So Brexit is. I'm happy with Brexit. You know whether you know I'm not in or out. Inter. This is outside of me being you know living in the UK and so I'm talking about Brexit brings more volatility in the market and when i said the markets the currency pairs are going to be moving especially the 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 gb currency pairs yeah so for me i'm happy with this movement so you know when it when it comes to a trader he doesn't mind you know when you've got um you know for example um what's his name um the pre president of um america um Donald Trump. When Donald Trump say, for example, um, he's going to annihilate, um, you know, North Korea, we're happy with him because that's going to put money in our pockets. Because basically, the market, the U, 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 the USD is going to fall or it's going to pop up, and so we're happy when, you know, they come out and they say all the foolishness. And we love it when the com the countries are are doing well, you know, um, you know, if they in the GDP goes up or they go down, we're happy with those things because if those things don't happen, then the market doesn't flow up and down, you know. Right, let's see if I can answer another question down there. I'm all in we uh, tech difficult. Please forward the recording as well. Thanks. Very interesting. I would like to know a lot more, please. Okay. Um, right. Why aren't you an arbitrage trader? No, okay, right, guys. No. An arbitrage no, I, I um this is for Jose. Arbitrage, no chance. Um, you know, you need you need millions of pounds for that. Because you you know, you need millions of pounds for that. You know, that, that would be difficult. And some of these arbitrage guys as well, they're in jail as well because what they did was they they, they faked the market a lot of times. Um, one of this famous um, guy now who's been extradited to America because he was one of them that claimed that um, sort of created the financial crisis. Because what they did, you can put your orders in. I can put an order in. I, I don't have to go directly into the market. I can put an order in and say, look, I would like to buy, um, say, on this thing, I want to buy if this thing goes, um, say, it goes to 130, 31, um, you know, 14, if the euro went to that, right? That's when I want to buy. And you'll put, say, for example, 
20 million at this point to buy. Now, other people, the guys with the big computers and so on, they are going to see this order and they're going to think, well, you know what? Um, there's an opportunity here, you know, and the big guys are coming in. So we're going to go in with the big guys. And only what he, did, what he then do, when everybody will start piling on the buying because he's going in with 20 million or, or 100 million, because these guys can afford to do those things. And then he faked the market. Everybody went going and then he then pull, pulls it out. Then the market just dropped like a bomb. And then he then go in and then sell, you know, with probably 50 million and then make and make a killing, you know. So those are the guys who can afford to do the arbitrage. Right, Jose, OK, Tank would, would be best then to join as a technical. Yeah, um, for me, really, I, I'm more like, um, you know, um, for those people who don't know what Jose question is, um, would it be best then to join as um, a technical trader or a fundamental then? Well, it depends on the individual. No. I, for me personally, um, I would more, if I was doing any, anything fundamental, then it would be more on the, um, on the stock side of trading. But also what I'm saying is, um, let me tell you how I use fundamental. Now, if I'm say, for example, I'm looking at, um, say one trader that I'm looking at at the moment is, um, what's it, uh, what's it one? Um, it's, it's, I'm looking, oh yeah, I was looking at William Hill. And at the moment, yeah, I'm looking at William Mill at the moment. And, and basically, I looked at William Mill and then and let me show you what I do now. Um, this is, so I go on to Yahoo. This is as much as technical that I'm going to do, right? Go on to Yahoo, Yahoo Finance. And then I go on to William Mill. Um, London Equity, right? And then I look at um, William Mill, right? And then basically, if you look on the left here, it says, right, uh, the revenue and profit, this is his earning coming in. So William Mill earnings, you know, sort of going down. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, I'm looking at the beta is negative. We've got market cap, William Mill market cap is over 280 billion i basically when i'm looking at um the average volume um the most um i don't trade anything um that's less than a million volume traded on average right now william mill at the moment it's their trading price ranges from 239 to 315 they're 244 at the moment i am going to be going into william i'm going to be buying william mill if they get to 250 I'm not get, telling people they should, but all I'm saying, that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, William Mill basically, say for example, um, William Mill X dividend date is going to be the 10th of, um, the 26th of the 10th, 2017. Then I know I'm not going to buy, I'm not going to, if I buy William Mill when they get to 250, I'm going to make sure that I come out before that date because what's going to happen, um, they're going to pay out a dividend of 5.16. Uh, which 0.16 um, arm sort of yield. That's what they're, you know, 16p they're paying for every share that you have got in William Hill if you buy the physical share, right? And then, so what tends to happen during this time, the stock price drops. So, but then I will keep William Hill until up to a couple of days before this time. That's as much a fundamental that I'll follow. You know, the fundamental guys, then they'll look at the, the profit to earning ratio. They'll look at the earning per share. They'll look at the earnings. They'll look at all of these things. What are they saying? What are they saying about the casino and gambling and all of these sort of things? Yeah. And they're going to be looking at all these sort of statistics, profile, financial options, historical data and the analysis. And, you know, whether they're saying what, you know, if these guys are saying people should buy or people should sell and so on. For example, at the moment, William Mill rating is, is to hold the stock. Yeah, William Mill also is a company um, that basically they get their employee, them, their employees, to pay. Like say, for example, they give them the the, the stock or share. Um, um, at say at this point, they're selling the in you know people work for them. Um, you see all these William Mill places. Um, for one ninety, one ninety six, they're actually selling their their um their employees at the moment. So they're going at one ninety six, and then within three years they've got three years no. If the next three years the stock is above 196, then they're in profit. If it's below, then they get their, the same money. So they say, for example, they can put in 500 pounds a month. They could put in 50 pounds a month. It's up to them how they want to do it. 
you see what I'm saying? So, so, you know, so that's as much as I would do in terms of my fundamentals. But I'm looking at the chart of William Miller and, and I'm going to be analyzing the chart. Yeah. Well, guys, um, I'm sort of running over now, but then if um, I, I'll just I'll take a few more questions. OK. Um, yes. Yeah, someone was asking. I'll take a few more questions. Uh, Joseph. OK. OK. So I've, hopefully I've, an, I've answered your question there. So for me, it's technical, technical trading. Um, because, you know, uh, looking at market hypothesis and market efficiency, I tend to just follow through and knowing that, look, this is what it looks like. And if I see this bit, then that's the time when I'm going to put my trade on. Right. Yeah. D money said, for example, do you do a binary option and is it tax exempt? At the moment? No, binary option is, is tax exempted. Right. Binary option is one of the thing I that's where I've lost a lot more money in binary option. No binary option. Basically, it's very challenging. It's, you know, with binary option, you know, you're, you're basically, you, the, the companies will give you 80% win rate. So, sorry, not 80% win rate. They'll give you 80% of, of risk, right? So say, for example, if you put a pound on, if you if you guess correctly, they'll give you eight. Um, if you put a pound down, they get 80 pence. Now, whereas if you do the Forex market now, I could then go into a trade and risk that same pound, but then look at what could happen. Whereas in binary option, you've got a fixed 80 pence and that's it, nothing more. So that's the reason why for me, I still do trade um, by interruption. I could also show you a trade that I put on only um, only yesterday um, by interruption. Okay, so let me, let me show you that trade I put on um, with by interruption yesterday. Um, let me just show you. Right, guys. Um, there's this trade right that I put on yesterday and let's look at statements. Okay, yesterday I put on um we yesterday was uh, the the eighth of the ninth. Um yes was it yeah the ninth of the the uh, the eighth of the ninth, yeah. A couple of days ago. And I start my account started with um three thousand um and seventy two. By the end of the session it was up um three thousand um nine but then these you know were some risky trades anyway because i was trading um this one i put on um 500 pounds per trade um you know so you know but then you've got trades when i put you know like five pounds and so on ten pounds and you know and so on yeah you've got times when i've got i'm just winning you know winning a lot of the trades and so on so but however i would i would sort of not encourage buying eruption unless you know, you know, I, I would say binary option is more. It's more of a gamble because you can't have a bet. You know, the risk reward that you'll get for this compared to binary option is um, you know, you know, it's 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 better. Um, let's see. Any more questions? Um, will will it? No, no, no. Tax on binary options and also this bit here, guys. Spread betting. You don't pay tax. You don't pay any tax whatsoever. Um, it's free. Yeah. So um, spread betting. In the UK, in America, it's different. In America, you've got to pay your taxes. In the UK, spread betting, which that's what I'm doing, even on this MT4 platform, MetaTrader 4 platform, um, spread betting is um, is free. By interruption, um, in terms tax free. So don't worry about taxation. Only the only way you would pay taxes if you're trading like CFDs, or for example, if you're buying the physical stock. Now, guys, you know you you for example, you can trade um. You could trade, uh, you could trade, say for example, Barclays, and use um, and use 150 pounds and open initially a 10,000 pound trade in Barclays without physically owning the stock because of what we call leverage, um, and what we, you know, you can get one to 400. So every pound you put down, the company, say for example, on this platform, will give you 400 pounds. So that's what we call leverage. That's the reason why these things you can lose more than you actually. Um, plan to you know plan to lose so you've got to be so careful in terms and that's the reason why you've got to understand this and understand what you're doing right guys i'm i'm gonna go now no but what i would what i would say guys if you need um any more information or anything you, you've got my email address all you've got to do i'll just type in inside here again all you've got to do send me an email and let me know your plans and what sort of support you would like and then i will um and then i will sort it for you um, I've put my email address there, um, you know, so uh, the the next the next training, guys, all you've got to do in terms of the next training, as I said, you tell me, it depends on, you know, what people are saying. 
um, you know, what people are saying, if you, you know, if you're telling, you know, whatever you tell me and how you would like it to operate, then guys, I'll work with that because ultimately, you know, I, um, you know, this is something that I have always dreamt of doing um, over the last four or five years. Um, you know, I love teaching, love helping people, but I'm hoping I can actually make a difference. And hopefully if we, if we get, you know, a number of you guys be, you know, doing very well, then we could probably set up our own group and get a lot of people coming in. Got a lot of black people coming in and making lots of money with us, you know. Um, so, you know, we just have to just keep it going, um, you know. And as I said, you know, the the five elements that we need, we just need to make sure we keep our emotion intact, belief in ourselves, what we think, you know, don't limit ourselves. All any negative limiting beliefs that we've got, we've got to let go of those. Have a positive mindset, right? Um, and have a trading strategy, and. And, you know, in terms of with our market indicators and basically just have someone, you know, who's helping you in terms of the psychology um, and in terms of money management. And, you know, and we're on, re on our way there. OK, guys. Um, um, well, basically, and also what I, you know, the plan could be that we, we, we say we get we go to a place and we do the sessions there. So therefore, I can download all the stuff on your computers and all that. All of it can be done right now like this where you can have access to my screen i can show you stuff and all that or we could go to a physical location we can sit down so but but as, as we all know people have got different learning style different needs uh, and so on okay so you know all we've got to do is just you know we'll work accordingly all right so um you know I've, i'm gonna go now um i hope you all have, have learned something and can take something from this and everybody enjoy the rest of the evening Bye bye Oh yeah, um, homework. You also mentioned homework, um, guys. Yeah, when I say homework, um, you know, basically have a look at all the stuff. Um, I'm hope I hope people are taking some sort of notes or probably I was, but anyway, I'm going to send this recording th through. I would love for people to go back over the recordings and um, you know, and just any bit that you didn't understand, you, you know, you didn't, you know, you can just let me know and I'll send you through um information so you can, you know, any extra reading that you need. But ultimately, guys, I will be um, I will I've got also access to different books in terms of the books that I use to change my mindset, the books that I've used to to help to get me to this next level, you know. And and those are the books that I actually um, I'll be getting, yeah. Um, and sending it across. And I won't, you know, you know, there's no need for you to go out there and 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 be searching all over. I've I've got all the stuff that you need. All right, guys. Um, once again, as I said, I'll speak soon. Bye bye.